According to a new report, Tesla has another problem on its hands, and that is that employees have apparently for a number of years shared private and often quote, highly invasive personal videos that the cameras in their cars captured uh, to different people at the company between 2019 and 2022. They apparently were using internal messaging systems to share photos and videos. And what's interesting about that is that Tesla is very specific about how safe you are from privacy concerns uh, around the number of cameras in the car. Uh, they say on their website, uh, that to protect your uh, privacy, images and video from the cabin camera do not leave the vehicle itself and are not transmitted to anyone, including us, unless you enable data sharing. Cabin camera features are processed directly on the vehicle itself. Image and video data from the cabin camera only leaves your vehicle if data sharing is enabled and a safety event occurs. Otherwise, this data is not saved to onboard memory and is not transmitted to anyone, again, including us. In a different section of the website, they say, they're equipped with a camera suite designed from the ground to protect your privacy. Camera recordings remain anonymous and are not linked to you or your vehicle. And it turns out, no, that's not true, I guess, at all. Because um, ex-employees are claiming that uh, workers even came across, well, well, we'll we'll get to Elon Musk, he pops up in one of these. But uh, they had a video of a man approaching a vehicle completely naked. They had They had videos of crashes and road rage incidents. One crash video from 2021 showed a Tesla driving in high speed in a residential area, including hitting a bike, a child that was riding a bike. The child flew in one direction, the bike in another. Apparently employees thought that that was, I don't know, funny, exciting, whatever. They were sharing it, although again, they're not supposed to have access to any of this. They even got video from inside of apparently Elon Musk's garage because they discovered that he had bought the Lotus Esprit from Esprit. the spy who loved me, Esprit. I don't have fancy cars, I don't know. And I don't go to fancy and places. You obviously fancy haven't seen Pretty Woman either, idiot. I, I actually have never seen Pretty Woman. I That's Lotus Esprit, continue, sorry. I, have, I haven't seen it. But anyway, he apparently bought it because again, remember as uh, cringy as Elon Musk is, he's even more wealthy, so he was able to buy that car. So they were seeing inside people's garages, inside their private property. They were taking these videos and then sharing them. That was, according to these ex-employees, just a big part of the community culture, trying to prove how funny you could be by spreading these things. And I wonder how you would end up with a corporate culture of desperately trying to be funny at all costs. I don't know, Brett, what do you think? <laughs> this uh, holds with many of the uh, SpaceX and Tesla employees I've actually met. Um, it's it's so ridiculous. It's exactly what you think. It's exactly what you suspect every time you're like you say something around the house in front of your personal assistant who shall not be named, like the uh, hey Google equivalent for uh, Amazon. And then suddenly on your Amazon advertisements, it's what you were talking about. These same people, especially it's so funny with with uh, Elon Musk for the reason I'm sure you're talking about it. This guy basically said, don't trust any tech companies. And he's got Taibi, his little doggy with the Twitter file saying, don't trust the tech companies, they're always lying to you. And then he turns around and says, except for mine. And then it's basically a countdown until the former employees who are the very folks who are like, no, I at, at all costs, the kind of douchey funniness I can unleash onto the world, so I shall. Especially if you fire me or I move on to another job. Before that comes back to bite him in the butt. Yeah, it totally makes sense. It's what everybody suspects, and and when you see it in the in print like this, you've got to say yes, that's true. Unless you're like an Elon Stan who believes everything he says, no matter what, and he can do no wrong. Yeah, yeah, and and I have no doubt that the to the extent that the Elon Stans will even see this story, they'll be like, yeah, no, that is funny. It's fine. I don't. It could be me. You could take a, a video of me. I don't even care. Again, like just all of the constant lying, like lying is just that that is an official part of Tesla corporate culture. And I don't mean just like lying about like the work environment, the racism that's been alleged. Just Elon Musk blatantly lying to his customers and potential customers over and over and over and over and over again, year after year about basically everything having to do with the cars. I'm not saying that the cars are the worst cars around or anything. I'm just saying that they never measure up to the massive promises that he says about them. Anyway, um, you know what? I don't think we're gonna have time for the second part of it. 
I will just say that the uh, every iteration of the blue check fiasco from the beginning of all of this has been more ridiculous than the last. And he has proven over and over and over again that God damn, his business instincts suck. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.